It's been a while since I did a ferret vlog. Um, I would like to upload this to Instagram, but Instagram's being a pain in the ass about letting me upload videos lately, so this will probably go on YouTube. Anyway, we have rearranged the ferret room again. Uh, this small cage used to be over, originally was in that corner where that filing cabinet is now, and we had a bunch of stuff in that corner, and we were using a barrier in the cage to try and block that corner off so we could still store stuff over there, uh, but that didn't last long. Um, so we moved all the storage stuff into other areas of the house, and then we had the small cage against that wall. But as you can see, it's not just the cage, it's also we have this ramp that comes out so that they can um, come down. By the way, those are pajama bottoms, that's not underwear, in case anyone's wondering. They're just short shorts. Um, I use a lot of my clothes as ferret stuff. Anyway, as you can see, it sticks out a bit. So when we had the cage against this wall, it wasn't just like the two feet of floor space that it took up here, but it came out to like here, you know, because of the ramp. So I discovered when I was trying to play with the dangly toy with Rusty that having the little cage over there just took up so much more additional cubic footage. Like this space was already sacrificed because the filing cabinet was there. So it's like I couldn't swing the dangly toy that way anyway. Um, but having the little cage there just took up extra space that we didn't need to have taken up. So we went ahead and moved the filing cabinet and the second filing cabinet over there and the small cage there and their stuff, you know, like their little boxes that they like to sleep in. So this, now we only have really two walls that are completely taken up with furniture. And we've got the other two walls that are a little bit more open. So that gives just more space in the room to play, which is great. Um, Opal still has to be in a cage when Rusty and Amber are out because she, she is getting better. So when we first introduced her to them, she immediately started stress duking and trying to bite them. And now when I hold her near them, she... Um, takes a little bit longer to start stress duking. She will mostly turn her head away and then start lunging and try and bite like a few seconds later. So like the fact that there's a little bit of a delay is good, but she is still being a mean weasel and I still can't trust her to not try to literally murder the little babies if um, she gets to have unsupervised time with them. So she has to stay in the cage while Rusty and Amber are out. And then when Rusty and Amber get tired and put themselves to bed, they go in a cage and then Opal can come out and play. So I know it's kind of not fair, but she is also a mean weasel princess. And uh, like ferrets do play rough, but when she plays, she's not playing. She's literally trying to kill them. She chomps down on them and goes into a crocodile death roll. Um, it's very mean. So we obviously can't let her do that. She used to do the same thing with Jasper and then she did eventually get over it. But she's still being a mean weasel with the new babies, so she's got to stay separated. But anyway, so this is the current state of the ferret room. I've got to say I am extremely happy with having a dedicated ferret space. Um, we are training them to please always go in that litter box when they're out of the cages. Um, it's funny because the babies are like doing really well with that and the older weasels are more likely to poop and pee next to the litter box. Sometimes on the pads and sometimes not. So it's interesting that the younger ones are doing better about it. But anyway, once they're consistently always going in there and once Opal stops being a little mean weasel and we can let them all out together, um, I'm going to be creating another barrier that's going to close off that section there so they can go from the office into the kitchen or rather from the ferret room into the kitchen and then into our office. So they will have like half the house to play in. But we want to get them super, super used to using the litter box there first. And Opal has to stop being a mean weasel. But anyway, so like, yeah, I, I got to say, if you have ferrets and you have the ability to make a, a dedicated ferret space, I would say it's definitely worth it. It has been wonderful, truly wonderful having this space. Because like when we let the ferrets out in the rest of the house, we have to like set up puppy pads and the barriers and everything and like we have to pick up our footstools because they will tear up our footstools and also use them as a way to get up on our desks so like we have to set things up so having a room in here where we can just let them run around all day and don't have to like set things up or tear things down has been wonderful and they like it too because of course like all their stuff's in here and they get to play all day and yeah it's been really great so if you can make a dedicated ferret space you definitely should Cute one. Yeah, so cute.
I think I forgot to mention, uh, I also got this light bar for the ferret room. So we only have the overhead light on if it is light outside and most of the weasels are out. But since Rusty and Amber have now tuckered out and I put them back in the cage and Opal is out and Opal is blind and she doesn't need this overhead light, um, we turn off the overhead light and we use the light bar. And I've currently got the light bar set on this light setting right here, this daylight setting. Um, it does also have a night light setting, um, but I pretty much never use that. So I use this during the day and then as the uh, day progresses on, I move it to yellow, to orange, to red, to deeper red, so that, like, I know ferrets are colorblind, but presumably they're still affected by the wavelength of light that is hitting their retinas. So we go to the yellow, to the orange, to the red, to the deep red as the night progresses. So yeah, this light bar has been great. I love it. I didn't want to drill any holes in the wall, so I just stuck it to the wall with the stickies that they gave, which worked out great. And it provides exactly the amount of illumination for the room that I want on whatever setting I put it on. So yeah, I'm super happy. I don't, I don't ever use any of these other colors. While I like them, I mean, they're pretty, but uh, they're also like <laughs> not at all what I bought this light bar for. So maybe I'll buy another one and like put it in the bedroom or the office or something so that I can use all these other colors. Um, I don't know. That seems like kind of a waste though. It was, an, it was kind of an expensive light bar, but anyway, so yeah. Definitely very cool. If you need something like this for your ferret room, highly recommended. I wanted the three foot bars so it would provide enough space, enough light. Cause I've got like a couple of one foot long bars um, that don't do the rainbow colors, but provide enough light for what they're used for. But it's like, I needed this to light up basically the whole room, not just a, you know, area of countertop or desk or whatever. So I got the three foot bar and it is great. You faker, you didn't even go. You don't get treats unless you go. Okay, good girl, yes. That syringe is pushing way too much out too quick. <laughs> Are you mad because you smell the babies? keep almost stepping on Jasper because he's this lump right here. <laughs> oh, weasel.